Oh, hey there. I heard you and five other people don't like background music in our episodes. Enjoy the show. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Greetings, everybody, from the graveyard. Mark Warman along with his daughter. Alyssa Rose. Yeah. Fruit of my loin. <laughs> We're having a uh, very focused week this week. Our goal is to get the drivetrain installed in our 1970 Dodge Coronet RT. It's a 426 Hemi four-speed FT6 dark bronze. One of one. One of only one left in the world, one of two originally built. So very cool car. Fitting a 426 Hemi into anything. <laughs> is is a job. If you look back to when we did our 1969 Roadrunner, very, very difficult, very tight fit. We expect the same thing. So we're focused on one thing primarily this week, and that is to get that drivetrain completed and ready to go into that car and then actually install it. What do you think? I think we can do it. I know we can do it. Top gun. So I'd be like, I'd be like Maverick and you'd be goose? like- Goose? Yeah, you'd be goose. No, you hit goose. The, how am I goose? When am I sitting behind uh, taking orders from you? I'm in the front, <laughs> I think we you're try. in the back, you hit your ejection thing and it doesn't open all the way up and you bash your head and then you hunch back down and then and you float down. I die. And then movie. I'm looking in the mirror and I'm crying wearing my tidy whities right? And then uh, Viper <laughs> comes by and tells me that I gotta find it again, I guess my confidence. How about nobody's goose? Well, if anybody's goose, you're goose. Okay, I get to die, cool. So, you know, great oh. balls of fire. Right now I'm underneath the 1970 Coronet RT convertible. Remember this is a 426 Hemi, four speed, one of only two ever made, the only one left in the world like it. You guys have watched us for years put engines and transmissions in. For the most part, they go pretty smoothly. If you recall, a couple seasons ago, our 69 Hemi Roadrunner convertible wasn't as easy. That's because the 426 Hemi is a very large engine fitting in a very small engine compartment. So I wanted to take just a minute to show you when we plumb out underneath the hood. Why we're plumbing things out before that engine goes in are because they'd be impossible to do once the engine and transmission are in. Wouldn't be impossible, it'd be difficult. The brake lines, these are our inline brake tubes. These are the new lines that we put on our cars. And this is the new proportioning valve designed for the disc brake setup. This car has disc brakes on it. But if that big Hemi is sitting right here, you notice how you can't see that part? Well, it's 10 times worse when the Hemi's in place. So that's why we put and pre-plumb all of this stuff out. The clutch rod, not so necessary because that comes in from the back side of the firewall, but it's still in place. This right here is a speedometer retainer. So this is a speedometer cable. This is the factory retainer that held it in place. So back here on the firewall, you see more plumbing. You see our inline brake tube. This is the one that goes from the uh, proportioning valve over to the passenger's front brake. That's right there. Again, not impossible, but highly improbable that you would get that in without causing damage once that big 426 Hemi is in there. This is our wiring looms in place. Wiper motor, again, wiper motor could be done later, but you would be stretched out over the engine. Why take the chance? Go ahead and install it now. This is our starter relay. Again, difficult once it's in place. Our heater box is installed. These are the nickel cadmium captive washer style nuts that hold it in place. You put it in now, you can actually get to that. You can get to your accelerator pedal bolts right here. Up here at the top, you barely see it, but this is the bottom of the voltage regulator. And this is the ballast resistor over here. Okay, so if we move around now to the other side, which this is the passenger side inner fender area, a lot of the things on here we could have done later, but why not go ahead and plumb it out now? One of the things that would be difficult to do later after the drivetrain's in would be our fuel lines. Again, these are our, 3 8 main quarter inch return line. These are the correct lines for 426 Hemi. This actually has the unique KV marking fuel inlet hose. Those markings are intentional. That's the exact same one they would have used back in 1970. All of these clips that you see here and here, these are all factory clips as well. 
you'll see that the rest of our brake line goes down under the frame rail and up into the flexible hose. I go down here, you'll see that we have our horns in place here, both horns, windshield washer reservoir. Look at how close that windshield washer reservoir is to that air box. Now this hood may, may need to be adjusted up just a hair because it's almost touching on it. There's our heater hose bracket that would hold our heater hoses once we have everything installed. So right now, 360 degrees, everything under the hood of this car is ready to accept the drivetrain. Just like on the front end, we have everything prepped out. We have our shocks in place right here. Fuel tank is in. Notice the line is another KV fuel line. See that fuel line going in there? That's the same as the front. That's the standard. That's what they use at the assembly line. If you look carefully, you'll see the matting between the tank and the actual body itself. Here's vapor return lines. You'll see the quick squeeze clamp styles. This is all OEM replica of the original. Another thing to notice is the gray primer. On this particular car, it was not an undercoat car. Now, a lot of times people just choose to put undercoating on their car because it's a sound deadener and it helps resist chips on the bottom. When you're dealing with a seven figure car, a million plus car, the only one left in the world like it, you want it to look exactly the way it did when it left the assembly line. So when it left the assembly line, the first thing it got was it got dipped into a rust proofing. That rust proofing was this color. It came out of the rust proofing tank, went over to the paint shop, and that is why you see overspray on these frame rails. This is normal. This overspray right here is exactly the way it should be. They didn't intentionally paint the bottom of the car, they just left the dipping there. And this blow-by that you see, that duplicates the original factory look. Okay, so are you guys almost ready? Yes. Everything's close? Okay. Yep. Uh, all right, last thing to show real quick here. Pinion snubber reinforcement right here. This is part of being a Hemi car. All Hemi cars got this pinion reinforcement, not this plate. This plate came from the factory on all of them, but on a 426 Hemi, you got that pinion snubber plate. That's how you can tell because it's welded in all terribly like that. That's more verified proof that that's a real Hemi car. There's two other spots on it that make you know that this is a Hemi and or a convertible. One is, these reinforcement plates right here that the studs go through. You notice that there's a reinforcement on there. That's very, that's very 426 Hemi, convertible and 440 in 1970. Then you come around to this side and this piece right here, this big opening piece, this is the extra torque box or subframe connector that makes it a 426 Hemi. Okay, and then this last subframe connector right here, this is convertible and Hemi only. This solid plate that you see all horridly welded here that is proper for this particular car being, one, it's a convertible, and two, it's a Hemi. If it was a hard top and it wasn't a convertible, it would still get that plate to reinforce these subframes. It connects this frame rail to the leaf spring shackle mount. All right, with that, gentlemen, are you, ladies, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, You're are you ready. guys ready? All right, let's move that bad boy in. In 1965, a racing legend was born, a Hemi-powered, wheel-standing beast of a truck known as the Little Red Wagon. Created from the Dodge A100 truck, this monster of a race truck was owned and driven by Bill Maverick Golden, a man even more famous than the truck he drove. Bill Maverick famously won over 1,800 trophies, thousands of races, and set an astonishing number of records during his racing career. It wasn't until Frank Wiley, which was Chrysler's chief of public relations at that time, took Maverick to the shop of Dick Branster, that they had a match made in heaven. And by the way, as a side note, it happened to be the same shop that had built Roger and Linda Mood's Color Me Gone racer. So that's pretty cool. Chrysler's A100, which is a cab over engine style of truck, hadn't been selling as well as their D100, which is a cab behind engine style. In the 60s, the best promotion a car could get was to win races or do something everyone would be talking about. So Chrysler decided to do both and had Branster shop engineer a custom A100 with a bigger engine in the bed of the truck. Chrysler also changed the engine of the custom truck to the enormous 426 Hemi and removed anything in the car that would add weight. That included the front bumper, the heater, the spare tire, the dash panel, and even the body sealer were all removed, which is just crazy. They even switched out the stock doors for fiberglass. What they ended up with was a back heavy truck that as soon as the supercharged engine was given some gas, would have a tendency to wheel stand and tear down the track like a bat out of hell. 
Sounds pretty cool to me. Bill Golden was in love. He went from winning races to winning hearts and minds in what has become one of the most famous Dodge trucks ever built. So famous, in fact, that in 2009, Sotheby's auctioned off one of the last surviving Bill Golden Little Red Wagons for $550,000. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like the rock, but I'm digging Steve Buscemi. Hello? Hey, Mark, what's up, buddy? <clears throat> the music's too low? Yeah, sure, I can fix that, no problem. All right, thanks. What we're gonna talk about today is this unique 70 Dodge Cornettes air delivery system, or in this case, the Ram Charger. This is a really cool system. As you can kind of see, I'm kind of standing in where the air cleaner would be right here. So when this hood is shut down, it actually seals off the air cleaner, which we'll talk about in a minute. But what's really cool is a lot of times you see these cars in a car show and you see this piece of rubber right here and you're like, man, is that like a, a diaphragm or how does that you know system work right there? Well, what that's intended for is when this thing is shut down, it is so tight in this engine bay that that is actually a relief area for our master cylinder. So when that hood shuts down, that little recessed area right there goes right over the top of the master cylinder. And that's how tight this thing closes. You can see these holes. If I put my hand inside of our, our air system, you can see my hands right there. So right now, it's actually in the closed position. There's a cable inside the car that mounts up underneath the dash that says carb air. And when you close it, it shuts off the scoops in a sense to force the air in, and it uses all the air inside of the engine compartment coming off the fan. So now these flaps are actually controlled, you know, when this air comes in by this cable right here where it comes out from underneath the dash, it comes up and it hooks right here. And this cable is actually connected to this arm. And this arm right here controls this rubber flap. So now to run the other side, you actually need a transfer cable. So that transfer cable is hooked right here and it actually runs all the way across to this side right here. Right now that cable is closed. So this is the only place you're getting air from whenever you were to pull that cable and open up your RAM air system, it would close these and these rubber flaps would be flush with this, allowing all that air to come in from those scoops and just shove directly right into that air cleaner, forcing all that nice cold air right into those two four barrel carburetors and just giving you more horsepower. It's amazing how you know, the engineers figured out this air grabber system. It's super cool looking whenever you pop the hood and you see that, that hemi orange painted Ram Charger air system in there, it just looks mean. But a lot of engineering went into this. What we're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna shut the hood and have you come inside here and see just how these engineers figured out how to make all this fit underneath of here with this unique hemi engine. I'm gonna shut this baby down. like that. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna raise the car up and we'll check it out. All right, so here we are underneath it here. As you can see, what we'll start with is a master cylinder here. It's amazing how tight this is. Here's that little rubber diaphragm we were talking about. And you can see how it fits right over the top of that master cylinder, allowing that extra clearance needed for this air box. Look at the shape all around the brake booster here, how tight all that is underneath of there. Here's your arm for your flapper door in the closed position. So in a sense, when it's open, it's gonna swing down this way. It's gonna be about right here. So all this went into consideration. I mean, it's clearing your hood spring. You can kind of see underneath it here how tight that is. Everything is just manufactured to perfection to fit up underneath of this thing. Super, super close. If we flip on over to the other side, we can see right here how tight our washer fluid or reservoir bottle is. I can't even get anything in there. I mean, that's like maybe an eighth of an inch. It's sitting there right on the top of the cap. You can see our hood spring here, how tight this is. I can't even really get my finger in there until I get to like right here. Then it'll fit just super tight in there. Come around this way right here. You can see our cable. If I flip this up, how that runs up 
to our transfer arms for our air box that opens up those flaps. Voltage regulator, you can see how tight that air cleaner is going to fit in there. We get over here, you can see how tight that windshield wiper motor is right up underneath of that air cleaner. So, and that, my friends, is why engineers work in the automotive industry is for amazing products like this. All right, so now we're going to talk about our actual air cleaners. Now, both of these, I got two examples here. Both of these are B-body, Ram Air, Ram Charger, or Air Grabber type of air system. This right here is actually off of an A12 Dodge Cornette Super B. Now, the A12 cars all had a fiberglass liftoff hood, which was really unique for 1969. It's a 69 and a half model. Now, as you can see on this air grabber system, this here has foam rubber. You can see it's squishy all the way around the edge of this air cleaner. When that hood shuts down on this car, or in this case, it doesn't shut down. You set it down on there and pin it on all four corners. This seal right here seals around that hole or that scoop that's underneath of there. And that's what's gonna force all that air, that cold air from outside, right into that air filter element. Now in our 70 Dodge Cornette situation with the Ram Charger, the seal is actually on the air box, which we talked about. That rubber seal is actually gonna go right around this edge of the base right here. So once that's sealed, you got your two scoops right here. All that air is being forced in, into that air box and just shoved right into this, the carburetors on this air cleaner. All right, so here's our air cleaner right here. And that thing is gonna be sitting like somewhere in this vicinity on that engine. But when that hood shuts down, that's gonna go right up in there like that. Boop, seal that baby off. So this gives you a great visual appearance. Imagine right here's our two carburetors, right? Right there. All that air being forced in there, this is sealed all the way around our air cleaner. All that air is just getting shoved right down into those carburetors. So really a unique system. And that right there, that says it all. Yes, this has a hem. That's cool. The AR Cuda and the Challenger TA are some of the most sought after muscle cars on the planet today. What does TA stand for? Is it Transatlantic, Trans Am, or Trans Auto? Stay tuned until after the break. What does this TA and Challenger TA stand for? Was it Transatlantic, Trans Am, or Trans Auto? The answer is Trans Am, which is short for Trans American. I'm gonna get that done here. Okay, very nice, okay. If you will go to the back, I think, like that, and then let's try to go forward. Go up a little bit, Doug, and hang on here. I'm gonna lower the car just a hair. Your fingers, Alyssa. How'd you do what over the there? Hell? I'm all lined up. You're all lined up? There's that. Okay, we got those tightened down there. Let's raise it up. I'm gonna lower the car down. Looking good. Going smooth so far, almost out of the woods here. Okay, watch your head. Going up. Move the lock. Yep, game time. Oh gosh, this makes me nervous. Yeah. Good. Right there. Pretty darn close. Perfect. Put the other side of the shackle in. Perfect. There we go. That's what I want to see. Oh, no. Got it. Got it? Okay. Okay, we're in. Uh, let's raise it up. 
Doug grabbed the pogo stick. I'll raise the car up so we can work on it and get the shocks on. After that, we can move to the front. Doug, you got the hardware? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Beautiful. Nice work, guys. Okay, our shocks are in place. Right now, we're gonna move to the front. We're gonna get the engine and the transmission loaded up in front of the car. Then we'll work together. We'll get it lowered down, get it into place. This is the part that's gonna really count because it's so tight getting that in there. You're gonna see exactly how tight it is to put a 426 Hemi in an E-body. Can't wait to do one in an E-body or an A-body. That would even be funner yet. <laughs> okay, let's do it. So we're doing great on our job, our tasks. Tell you who isn't doing so great is Mr. Will Scott. What was that uh, commercial, Will, serve no wine until it's time? We will paint no car before it's time. He's about to show you what happens when you jump the gun. I'm talking about a paint gun, so it's kind of like a play on Yeah, words. I saw that, yeah. Jump well, he gun. couldn't actually jump over anything. Ah, oh, it's a shame. Dissension. I'm sorry, Will. I would never <laughs> say not. anything about the fact that you've added about 40 pounds. He, he said something about it when I added mine. I've so. lost 40 pounds. I think I know who found it. <laughs> no? Right now behind me is our 1972 Duster. Uh, we got the pre-paint done. And as you can see, we had some issues. Uh, the body man said he had it ready for paint. We just rolled it right in the booth. I painted it which was my mistake for doing it. So here we are. We had to basically kind of start all over, start blocking it down. And I, all the different colorations is all of our highs and lows. So if the car at the point it is right now is very straight. The uh, style lines look great. Had to do a little body work to make sure these rockers look nicer. But overall, the car is all blocked down, ready to go in the booth. I want to have her mask it up, and then we'll start laying some primer on it. So right here, when we got it blocked out, you can see there was a low spot here. It was high here and high here, and how you can tell that is the fact that that's where the paint's gone and this paint stayed here. So as she blocked it down, doing the nice cross hatch, uh, it kind of just reveals where the problems are. You know, th this was a low spot, but she brought this two high spots down to where it just makes it nice and perfectly straight now. And that's kind of the same thing we got going on right through here. You know, this was a low spot here. Everywhere you see these, most of the time they're just the high spots. So she blocks it down <clears throat> and kind of takes what looked like a ding or a dent or just a wobble and just blocks it to that right, right at that perfect point where it just makes it nice and flat and makes it a lot bigger. So it makes it uh, go away completely. Uh, when you're blocking this down, a lot of times when the car's primer, you use the guide coat for your cross hatching and it, that'll tell you right away what you're working with here. In this case, it happened to be the paint. So. Unfortunately now, I have to go back, primer a few spots, but, uh, but we'll be good to go and we'll be painting it next week without a problem. And this car is gonna be done in a base coat, clear coat, uh, and tawny gold. We're almost there. Gotta to touch up a few little things real quick, put it in the booth, prime it, get it out. Next week, we'll sand it down and uh, we'll be good to go. When these cars are on the whirly, they do sag a little bit. So you gotta always make sure that before the car goes on, you've got your gaps dialed in and you have to actually really trust what you're looking at. Because even with this, if you look right here, you'll see that the gap gets a, gets a little tight in certain areas, but you have to be confident that what you've looked at already. So I know that once I'm done painting this car and we get it to Dave and it goes on the bin pack, uh, it doesn't sag anymore. And then everything will look great all the way around. All right, Doug, so she's gonna raise it up. Alyssa, you can go ahead and raise it all the way up to the max, as high as it'll go. So we just finished installing the differential on the 70 Coronet, all right? Everything is bolted into place. We haven't hooked up all the cables and stuff just yet. That's not necessarily something we need to do this minute. I mostly wanted to get that rear end underneath the car so it would counterbalance it and keep us from put, if you put that big Hemi in the front, it's a very good chance that thing's gonna drop. It's the first Hemi you installed? Yes. 426 cubic inch bad boy? Uh-huh. 
So I've been working with my wonderful cousin Doug or cousin Dougie or cousin Duct Tape <laughs> or Twilight Zone, whatever you want to call him. And my daughter, Alyssa, who is really doing a great job these days, as you all notice watching at home. She's doing phenomenal. All right, let's roll in. So steer it best you can underneath. Once we get it under there, we'll go ahead and reset. Okay, let me get an eyeball in the center here. So this is a very, very tight fit. So you weren't here when we put in the engine in the 69 Roadrunner. I don't think you helped us no. that day. There's no room. It's micro tight. The whole unit needs to go to the uh, passenger side about six or eight inches, right in there. Let's stop there. Okay, starting to look pretty good. Let me look at the back, move think, over to the side. I think the back needs to come a little bit to the driver's side. Uh, yeah, a little bit that way. So Doug, you keep yours from moving, just pivot it. And Alyssa, pull over there a little bit more, Alyssa. Okay, that's probably pretty close right there for a start makes me a little bit nervous to work on because it's one of two. It's a very rare car. And the only one left on the planet. Yeah, so basically one of one. Um, I also helped Will do all of the prep work before the pre-paint on this car. So it's really exciting to actually go through the shop with it, but there's no room for error. I bet you didn't have a laser. I think we need to, yeah, we should get us a laser. Shoot through that Why hole. Why don't we have a laser? That'd be really nice. Um, it's probably not terribly far, but probably two inches forward and two inches that way. So let's go forward just a little bit. Just kind of jerk it like that, okay? And then Doug's way. Okay, I think that's worth trying there. And that's worth trying there, okay. You guys guide it, all right? And I'm going to run this, because this is really crucial if you get within one millimeter and, and you do something crazy. Well, we're not ready for those yet, honey. Oh, when you, We okay. gotta get it really close and ready yeah. to line up first. I'm too eager, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what yeah, we're waiting, yeah. what we're ready okay, for just then. just watch everything. Usually you have to shift it to one side and then back over to the other to clear. Whatever way, Doug, you're, you're the eyes, man. Okay, let's, let's check this out. Okay. Oh boy, yeah. Pretty close, yeah. huh? Yeah, <laughs> pretty close. Shift it your way half It's gonna be a real problem when we hit that steering gear. That's usually the problem. That's when you have to go that way. Okay. So we come down another six inches, but we gotta go this way first. Shift it over yeah. that way. So shift it that way just a little bit. Okay, so we got to come down and then sh and then move it over. You want to take these off now? We probably can do that. God, Dougie and his tape. I don't understand the tape thing. What is with you and the crazy tape? That's where the tape from. <laughs> Everything he tapes is like it's going to go to the moon and back, and it has to survive going through that. What is it? What happens? What is that? The outer the heat here? thing that kills everybody? You know? Ozone, right? No, the reentry. Okay, oh, I can't do it. Can we try going down a little more? Yeah. What's wrong over there? We're just Nothing. getting the shock out of the way. Can you pull it towards us? Oh, yeah. I haven't done this for a hundred years, so it takes me a little longer sometimes. Sorry. You're doing fine, Alyssa. Appreciate your help, honey. Okay, this side's gonna clear. Okay, so I'm gonna try lowering the car a little more. You clear over there, Alyssa? Yeah, it's tight. Hold on, Mark. Hold on. Look I'm... right, no, we're pinching. In 1970, you could order almost any Mopar muscle car from the factory in FM3 pink. True or false? If you ordered a Dodge muscle car in FM3 pink, the color would be called Moulin Rouge. If you think you know the answer, stay tuned until after the break. So what do you guys think? True or false? In 1970, if you owned a Dodge muscle car painted FM3, it would be called Moulin Rouge? The answer is false. If you had a Dodge Muscle car painted in FM3, it would be called Panther Pink. Plymouth. Manly. Pl Plymouth is the one, because they called it Moulin Rouge. Think, and then called it Moulin Rouge. Yeah. And Panther Pink for the Dodge. Dodge is more masculine. So if you had no, a Dodge, that's... it's called Panther Pink. Yeah. No, you did good. You, okay. did, you did real now good. Now you guys so know. Now they now they We're know. learning together. Okay. Yeah, FM3. Could you get that from 1971? Echo, quietness, lights come down. Stay tuned. It's kind of, let me walk out of frame. Powerhouse. This power steering line is gonna hit. Okay. On the right. So we can also take the power steering line off and you've got about a half an inch here. Okay. Oh, the one thing it is hitting though is uh, the brake line. This black thing that holds wires. Just look back here. It's right okay. here, attached to the car. See how the engine's gonna grab that, tear it up. It will probably bend it out of the way, but I might be able to just bend it myself here. Yeah, that's a positive battery too. Okay, it's out of the way. I'm going down a little more. Ooh. 
Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. Looking good okay. on my side. Pretty close. We did it. Great. Okay, so we are lined up. That was actually amazing that that fit. That's absolutely <laughs> not a hair. If you watch down through that tunnel that I was looking through, through the grill, it was within a couple of millimeters, maybe of hitting on each side. So good job. All right, so let's align that thing and put the bolts in. Okay, if we just pin a couple of bolts on the outer ones, just stick them in there to hang it in place, then we can raise it up and put everything together. So, looks like you need to go straight up. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Beautiful. Check. Okay. Under short. You got one? I got okay, one. I guess we're close. We're at a point now where we can go ahead and raise it up and then we'll actually get the bolts in the correct direction and, and bolt, bolt it down, tighten down. So, so go ahead and raise it up, Alyssa. Okay, stop. Be careful, Dad. Okay. Nothing. All right, up we go. Okay. Not too bad so far. How high would you like it? Keep going, keep going. And you can lock it in place right there. Perfect. Okay. Doug, go ahead and drive in the driver's side torsion bar. And Alyssa, I want you to watch at the front that it's lined up with the hexagon. I guess that's what that is. Doug, go ahead and put that forward. Oh, yeah, there we go, just like that. Okay, move your hands out of the way so I can see some. Okay, Doug, I think that looks pretty lined up to me. So if you want to drive that in. Okay, let's go ahead and do the other side, then we'll move the torsion bar boots at the same time. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So Doug, go ahead and run the torsion bar adjuster bolt in. You see it, right? Let me have a look. Oh, that's really close. Usually if you look side across this plane and this plane, and you can just see the whole head of the bolt, that's about the right adjustment. Now we may have to make a final one once we lower it down, but that's a pretty good starting point. So let's duplicate the exact same thing on the other side. Good. Remember when I broke Andy's wrist? Uh huh. That's funny. <laughs> so, so our buddy Andy Crandall. Hey George, I see you at home there. Andy, one time, these two guys, they couldn't stand the fact that my 70 Charger had burned the rear tires off. Didn't matter what tires it was, didn't matter what gear ratio it was, it would just light the tires up all the way over the Glenwood Bridge. I could smoke them. So they said, well, it's because your rear tires are bald. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's put some better tires on there. So we go over to Andy's house. He's got a 71 Charger, just got the car. It was a used car, had BF Goodrich TA radials on it. Nice, big, fat, juicy meats. So we put those on my Charger and I went out and I power braked them till they almost popped. So Andy was screaming, crying because I ruined a brand new tire, right? Two brand new tires. So we come back, he's so mad. He wants those tires off of my car and back on his Charger. So he jacks the car up, his charger, to put the wheels back on it. 
and he's jacking along. He gets it up where he wants, he puts his hand in there, he puts the wheel on it, and the jack slips and falls right down and crushed his hand between the actual wheel and the car itself. So I went around, I was starting to panic, you know, oh God, I wasn't cool like I am now. Now I just be cool back then. I go around, I get the bumper jack, he's screaming like a little girl, you know. I'm jacking it up, I'm jacking it up. Okay, okay, a little more, a little more, I can get it out. It slipped again, <laughs> right back down on his wrist. So anyway, to this day, he has arthritis in that wrist, so. No kidding. Yeah, lesson learned. <laughs> okay, Alyssa, let's do this thing. Okay, did you do this before on one of the cars? I don't, no. I don't think I, I had you do this. Yeah. Okay, if you look here, this car has styled wheels. If you look at those wheels, you can see the holes in them. That means you can see through the wheel and see the drum. When you had that type of a wheel on a Chrysler in this year, they required you to paint this red, about a two inch wide or so patch of red. So you see the highlighted area here? Yeah. So we're gonna move this over there to catch any paint that might fall. So if you look in our book, you see the two inch wide patch. It goes from about here all the way to the center. That's the exact area that you'll be able to see through these holes here. They want you to see that red paint, that racy red paint. That's okay. why we're doing it. Okay, so I have a two inch wide chisel brush here. And this is our red. You can't hardly see it. It's actually Rust-Oleum red. And this is actually really close to what the factory used. So we're gonna wanna put some paint on there. Just like that. Sounds kind of weird to do it this way, but this is how they did it at the factory. This is how we're gonna do it here. I usually go almost to the lug nuts, really close there. That gets me a good heavy coat on there. But that's it, it doesn't go around the edge, it doesn't go back here, it just goes on the face of it like that. What do you think, try the other side? I think I can do that. Okay, sorry, I apologize, I apologize. Just like okay. that, that's right. Doug, if you've got the heat gun, would you start drying the left rear for me, please? What, that Cornet RT? It's the only one in the parking lot. It's okay. You know? How's that look? Okay, that's gonna work just fine. That's great, okay. What are you doing, Doug? Is this the right direction? Sure, Robotron. <laughs> Go ahead. This yeah, nut job. To the left or to the right? Good. All right. Okay. Let it down. I'll pull the legs out on the other side. Drivetrain installed, 1970. What kind of car is it? Cornet. What model? 1970. No, that's the year. Yeah. <laughs> Here, this will help. Here, Alyssa. RT. That's <laughs> yeah. RT. Okay, anyways. 1970 Dodge Cornet RT. Beautiful. 426 Hemi 4 speed, 34 Dana I'll do track what you pack. you said you were going to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just talk to the camera. Woo! Look at that bad boy in there. Good job, Dougie, installing the drivetrain with us. Thank you. Did Frankenstein get hold of you about your bangs? <laughs> he would like to have those back. <laughs> Alyssa, mm -hmm. your hair looks great. Thanks. Good job helping out. Good job, guys. Anyway, we've got the right train in it, so now we can move on to start assembling the car. This car is gonna be done in no time at all. It's a beautiful car. Only got Remember, what? it's a seven-figure car. They built two of them in the entire world, and it's the only one left on the planet. So if somebody can top that, if you can come up with one, one of none, but doesn't make any sense. No, right? it doesn't. Okay, okay, so we're done. Rare car, good job. All right. Thanks, guys. Let's start rocking. This is the kind of week that I absolutely love. The rarest car that we've ever done, the only one left on the planet, one of only two ever built. And it went together the way it's supposed to. So no matter what, that's a tight fit. But it went in. Yep. Alyssa and cousin Dougie. Brewster. Did a great job installing the drivetrain with me. It went really well. 
The pieces fit in there that we're supposed to. Going back through that car, if you start out at the beginning, uh, I took a lot of time to show you why we put things in place underneath the car mm -hmm. before we actually start working on it. So like the fuel tank and the fuel lines, those are important and it's, and it's important to show why, but also it's really cool because this is one of the few cars that we've actually had the painted undercarriage, which is meant to emulate the look of the dipping process that happened back in the day. Mm -hmm. Most of the cars people want undercoated. This is a very rare car. It was not an undercoat car. It's not on the fender tag. So he wanted it to look exactly the way it was with that grayish primer and then the blow by of the FT6 on it. But you're talking about that beautiful color is gonna be absolutely stunning. This oh, is beautiful. Yeah. It's not just a great rare car, mm. but when we're finished with it, which by the way, is going to be in season 10 of graveyard cars, you're gonna fall in love with it. One of the special things about it for me is I actually helped prep before all the paint for Will. So that was actually the first car oh, that yeah. Will stuck me on to start learning how to prep. Did a good job. It looks Thank really you. nice. Yeah. And you know, I gotta say, it's actually gone through the shop pretty quickly. He's done really well at speeding up the process. He's got a good team around him right now and they're knocking those cars out. So while me and Doug are over here building out drivetrains where we're normally six or eight or 10 ahead, we're not so many ahead right now. So that's what you're gonna watch as, as we continue to evolve, like in next season, we're gonna probably deliver 10 or 12 cars. I mean, it legitimately is gonna be a lot of cars yeah. because we have dialed in our process to a point where I think you're gonna see the fruits of all those efforts. It's gonna be pretty cool. Get to work with my daughter, what can you say? That's a wonderful, it's a gift, it's a blessing. Even though I tease her all the time and I'll never stop because I think it's made you into the person you are today. Do something crazy. Well, we're not ready for those yet, honey. Oh, when you, we okay. gotta get it really close and ready yeah. to line up okay. first. Now, if we had six foot long bolts, those would have been. <laughs> I'm just gonna it, so it's heavy. <laughs> You're doing fine, golly. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, come on, let's go, come on. Okay, so we're, one of us can watch. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I've Character always, building is what you used to say. Yeah, you beat them down <laughs> till they can't hardly stand on their own and then you build them up and it's like steel. You take steel, you want it to get harder, you want it to be tough, get it red hot until it's just drooping and has no reason to live and then hit it with some <laughs> cold air. That's how I do when I build you up. That turned out fine so for me. You've been so, tempered. You know. Mark Warming, Graveyard Cars Tempering. Anywho. Uh, also, I actually did a little technical tip for everybody at home on our A100. Very good on that tip. By the way, that, that was, was very cool. informative. That vehicle is going to be the end of your father. So, oh, okay. yeah, you might want to take out a real- yourself in it or? Well, it's going to be a thousand horsepower built by Ray Barton. It's got a <laughs> blower shop 871 blower on it. It's got dual Demon 850 carburetors that are designed to go on a blower. Custom built Zoomy headers. But it's only on two wheels, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, as long as I don't have to steer it, should be fine. Should be fine. It's straight line, that's all you need. The little dead wagon is really gonna be the little dead wagon. It's gonna be really I mean, I'm not happy about the fact that I may have to die in it. Like that would Legacy. be the, to be honest, well. You wanna go out when you're on top. Look at all these other people, other celebrities, you know? It's actually, yeah. I'm gonna hit the gate doing 98 saying, let them truckers roll 10-4. Okay. Because we got a great big convoy. Ain't You're gonna have to get Emma in here if you want something to dance. Come on, join with. our convoy. Hey, you want me to show you some moves? No. It's called the Backwoods Teapot. So, no thanks. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. That's true. Tip me over and pour me. So it's a backwards. That's the same exact thing, that wasn't. Thanks for watching everybody. Sorry yeah, about it. That was rubbish. Oh, in. I'm rubbish? What about you? Well, your little dance was. Yeah. It was rubbish. No. Okay. You're putting on weight.